Did you or a loved one suffer from bad hook sets? You either set the hook too soon or you set it way too late or even more disheartening, suffer from losing fish before you can even get them to the net? Luckily for you, we've developed a proprietary system to completely revolutionize your hook sets. To this point, we spent a lot of time teaching you how to cast, what fly to pick, but we haven't really talked about what to do when a fish actually takes your fly, right? It's kind of an important part of the process that we really should dive into. I've got four tips for you that are going to help you hook, fight, and release fish a lot more effectively so that you don't end up either missing the hook sets a bunch or losing fish in the middle of the fight. You're still gonna do that from time to time. That's part of the learning curve in fly fishing. But with these four tips, you're gonna be able to lessen those experiences and end up putting more fish in the net. Tip number one, you wanna make sure you keep enough tension on the line. This is something I saw a ton as a guide was folks not having enough tension on the line. They set the hook and they let the line just kinda of go. And that means the fish can get off super quick. If there's not tension keeping that hook in there, chances are the fish is gonna scamper. Tip number two, put the fish on the reel when you can. I talk a lot about reels and they're just fancy line holders and they kinda are, but if the fish takes up enough of your slack, put it on the reel. If the fish gives you the opportunity to reel in your slack, put it on the reel. Use the drag to fight the fish and then you can focus on your rod angles and making sure that the fish isn't getting into tangles or trying to run away from you too much. And tip number three is all about the angle of your fly rod. I don't wanna get into the weeds too much here. There's just a couple of points I'd like you to remember. You've heard that you need to keep your tip high. That's important because we're reminding you to keep tension on your fly line and it's easy to do that when the tip's high. However, that's not the most effective way to use a rod to fight the fish. If you fight the fish with your tip just super high all the time, you're only exerting a little bit of pressure on that fish with the tip of your rod. Instead, you wanna try using a little bit of side pressure, right? Bend that rod to the side, opposite the direction the fish is trying to go. That side pressure puts a lot more oomph on the fish so that you can guide it to the net quicker. It's like the difference between your dad telling you to knock something off and then your mom telling you to knock something off, right? <laughs> the pressure's different and I know who I'm listening to if I'm a kid. The last thing I wanna say about rod angle and pressure is yes, it matters, but you don't need to be out there like a samurai going choo, choo, choo with your fly rod, all right? That's a little overkill. Just try and keep the pressure consistent. Don't keep it super high. If you have it just off to the side a little bit, you'll be able to guide the fish to the net a lot quicker. Tip number four, is about fighting the fish. Now, I've used the phrase fighting the fish because it's something we all understand, but it's really important to remember that you're not actually fighting the fish with your fly rod. Instead, you wanna think of it as guiding the fish towards the net. You use that side pressure I was talking about to make the fish swim in the direction that you want, and then you scoop it up with the net. The reason that you don't want to think of it like you're fighting a fish like you would on conventional tackle is fly rods aren't that stiff. They're not made to just pull fish out of areas and into the net. You want to use them more as a guide to get the fish where you want it to be and then scoop them with your net. All right, enough of me blabbering and pretending to be a samurai. Let's get out to the river and put all this stuff into practice. This wind is why you should never fish in Wyoming. The wind is always terrible. You definitely never want to fish here for that. That reason alone. Utah, Idaho, Montana, fishing's way better. No wind in any of those states either. It's a miracle. All right, so I've hooked up. You can see I've got the rod tilted a little bit to the side. I'm not holding it straight up like this because if you do that, you're just fighting it with the tip. 
because when I turn the rod to the side, I've got a lot more leverage to bring that fish into me and to try to do it as quickly as possible. It's fun to fight fish, but your goal should always be to land it as quick as you can. And one other thing, I've reeled my slack line in, but with this entire fish, uh, I was able to play most of it just by stripping line in. And you can do that a lot more often. You rarely need to put trout on the reel. And especially, I mean, this is a nice fish, but he's not big enough to really warrant going on the reel. So I'm just gonna scoop him up and we'll get the hook out. So just a reminder, always make sure your hands are wet before you touch fish. Just gonna reach in, super light pressure. You never wanna squeeze the trout. I've actually found that it, it's harder to hold on to the fish when you're squeezing the life out of them. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, soap in the, uh, in the shower. You squeeze it, it just slips right out. So just very gently, just come on in. Say goodbye to the camera, little buddy. See, I didn't really ever take him fully out of the water. Just let him go. So another key to good hook set is making sure you don't have too much slack line out there. You need some slack line, obviously, to get a good drift. But if you notice, I'm pulling my line in, I'm keeping a pretty tight connection between me and my fly so that when a fish comes up and eats like that off the top, it's a very quick hook set and there's no slack line at all to get in the way. So that hook set was a little delayed because <laughs> I thought I hooked bottom. But if you notice, I lifted up. I didn't jerk, I didn't pull back. I didn't, you know, it wasn't a Bassmaster Classic or anything. I just lifted up. It was a firm lift with the rod, but it was still just a lift. And this guy is putting up a pretty decent fight. Well, I'm gonna walk up to him and get him in the net. So again, as far as hook set goes, I just want to reiterate, if you watch here, it really is just a simple lift. Uh, you can obviously lift like in the direction that the current's going uh, to kind of use the current to help set that hook. But your hook set should not be like this. Uh, there's no reason to jerk your whole body and pull the rod really hard. That's just going to yank the fly out of their mouth a lot of the times. And if you do that, it's so quick that uh, you'll actually end up missing them. You'll pull it out of their mouth before they really even get it closed around it. So again, that hook set just needs to be a very subtle is kind of a good word for it, but just firm. Think of it like a mattress, you know? You don't want the one that you just sink into like it's a bowl and then you don't know how you're gonna get out. You can't climb the sides of it. Uh, that's too soft. And if you set your hooks like that, you're gonna miss them every time. But you don't want it so firm that it's like sleeping on a rock. You wake up, you feel like you're 80 all of a sudden, all right? Kind of like Alex when we go camping and he doesn't have the air mattress. He wakes up the next morning and, man, he'd think the world had ended. Your hook set should be that happy medium between the two. It's the Goldilocks of it. And it might sound like I'm stressing this a lot, and I kind of am because I've watched a lot of beginners miss fish because the hook set's just off. So it pays. To, to get that down and to just build that muscle memory. It's something that will come with time. So something else that takes time to learn is tension on the line when you're fighting the fish. How much is too much and how much is too little? You wanna make sure you have enough tension that your rod's still bent but you don't want to have so much tension that you're putting unnecessary pressure on your line or on the fish. So it really is kind of a balancing act of enough tension, 
that you can guide the fish to where you want it to be versus not enough tension to where the fish is either running the whole show or gets off the hook completely. Oh, 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 dude, that's a fish. Go! Oh! Oh! Did you see that? I didn't. That thing was huge. That was a big fish, is what that was. So I'm not like 100% sure what happened right there. Uh, more than like, I, he just worked himself free. I'm fishing barbless hooks, so that will happen from time to time. The other culprit could have been my tension was just not enough. I didn't have enough tension to keep him on there. I might have had the wrong rod angle just not the right kind of pressure, and so it just gave enough on that fly to pop it free. I'm pretty sure he was on the midge, my bottom fly, so pretty small fly, not a whole lot holding him in there. I see a lot of beginners miss fish because they don't set the hook on everything. If it looks like a bite, set the hook. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Uh, and everything to gain. So, and it's a great way to practice your hook sets. It's a great way to build that muscle memory. Uh, you've watched me go through here. I've set the hook a few times and it hasn't been a fish. It's been on the bottom uh, is, is what's causing my fly to go under, but it's still a lot better to actually set the hook than potentially miss the fish just because I think like, oh, maybe that's not a fish. Just set the hook. What do you have to lose? And again, it gives you that practice of building that muscle memory for how your hook set should feel. There we go. All right. So you want to keep some good tension on the line. You can see I don't have too much, but my rod's definitely bent. I'm using that side pressure. And again, this is another good example to remind you that you're not fighting the fish in the traditional sense that I'm not like trying to horse this thing in. I'm not trying to just control it. I'm trying to guide it, right? So it wants to go that way. So I'm putting pressure on it to not let it go that way. It wants to run upstream. I'm gonna put pressure on it to bring it downstream. Okay, it just tried to run over to those branches over there and get tangled up. No, I'm gonna put pressure on it. And we might have to go downstream with this one. Oh, there we go, got him. Nice rainbow. Now that you're a pro, at hooking, playing, and landing fish, we're gonna go on to the next video, which is how to properly catch and release trout.